There I was sitting in a lab in Santa Monica with ultrasound pucks pushed up against my head and looking like I was Frankenstein's monster. Now these ultrasound emitters were not the kind that they use to look at babies in the womb. These are specialized for neuroscience. They are focused beams of sound that were aimed straight at my caudate nucleus, which is located deep within my brain. Earlier, I had to get a brain MRI so they knew exactly where to point the beams of sound deep within my brain. They assured me that the ultrasound wasn't strong enough to cause any damage within my brain, but I was still a little scared of the experience. Now the idea is that they were stimulating my brain with the ultrasound without any preconceived notions of what was supposed to happen. So there I am, just locked in, and I hear a little bit of a ticking sound and they tell me like, okay, the ultrasound is on, it's stimulating and that's about it. And then they turned off the lights and I was just sitting there in that chair. All they said was just sit there and feel what you feel. I definitely didn't want to fight any feelings. So I just by default became mindful because I practice meditation all the time. That seemed like the right thing to do in the moment. And I wasn't actively trying to meditate, but I just sat there open, aware, and present. And then I just started to feel this rush, this bliss and joy that was happening to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, is this the ultrasound? It was just like these waves of just like good feelings. Like, man, I can't believe I'm here in California and Santa Monica in a neuroscience lab, getting my brain stimulated by ultrasound. And then something that was really unexpected is that I just started becoming very thankful for my family, for my career, for all the exciting things that I get to do. I tried not to get too self-reflective because I wanted to just experience the good feelings and let my thoughts build from the good feelings. But it did feel like this good mood and positivity was bubbling up inside of me. And because of those emotions, my thoughts were being directed towards really positive and awesome things in my life. During the experience, I didn't know what area of my brain they were targeting. But later on in the conversations I had with Dr. Nico Regente, and Dr. Josh Kane, they told me that they had been stimulating my caudate, which can be responsible for good mood. It's implicated in things like depression and anxiety. But the most interesting part of the discussion is that they said that people with meditation experience tended to have a better outcome, which totally blew me away because what that probably meant is that signals coming from the deep brain to generate good emotions can get blocked with the cortex. You can be like, oh, this isn't gonna work, I'm negative, I'm gonna direct my thoughts to negativity, and it can block the signals that are coming from deep below. The more mindful you are, the easier it is for that neurostimulation to affect the cortex above. And that principle became even more apparent on further experiments that Dr. Nico Regente has been doing in recent years. Recently, his team has been doing cave retreats in a cave in Oregon. The test subjects will spend days in absolute darkness with no clocks or light or stimulation, and they'll do meditations in those caves. Nico's team wanted to do some research on if they could clarify how deep these expert meditators were getting into meditation. They started with where most of the research is at right now, taking a look at brain waves of alpha, theta, and gamma, but Nico suspected there might be something deeper going on. So there's actually something that happens when your heart beats, it actually sends electrical signals up into your brain waves. So your heartbeat can actually be detected by taking a look at your brain waves. The signal is called a heartbeat evoked potential or an HEP. And what Nico's team found in the cave studies was absolutely shocking. They found that that heartbeat signal in the brain waves was more reliable in determining how deep in a scale of one to five an expert level meditator was in their meditation than any of the brainwave signals. As the expert level meditators went deeper into meditation, the brain's response to heartbeat grew stronger and stronger and more synchronized. So think about that. As you get deeper into meditation, this signal that's coming up from your heart is eliciting a larger and larger biosignature. So what's going on here? Well, the way that I think about it is that we know that the brain is filtering out the majority of information around us. If we were to take in everything that's going on internally and externally, our conscious experience would 
quickly become overwhelming just because there's so much information coming in. So a huge part of what the brain does is filter out information. So you can imagine all these signals coming up the spinal cord and into the brain and the brain blocking most of them so that we're not absolutely overwhelmed by all the information that's coming in internally, let alone what's happening externally. But it seems that the deeper and deeper you get into meditation, the more that the brain opens up it's like this gating technique. It opens up the gates to different signals. And in doing so, the heartbeat evoked potential in these expert level meditators became stronger and stronger. And that combined with my ultrasound experience created this epiphany of like why mindfulness meditation is so helpful in these situations. If my caudate, which is a deep brain structure is being stimulated by ultrasound, the way that I allow that ultrasound signal to have the biggest benefit and effect over my entire brain is just to slip into a mindfulness state because I'm not having my cortex, my logical thinking brain down regulating the deeper signals. I think it makes a ton of sense. If you are stuck in default mode network and logic and overthinking, you're actually blocking a lot of these signals that are coming up to you. So if you're sitting there thinking and ruminating during things like ultrasound stimulation or red light therapy, you're actually blocking the neuromodulation effects from those interventions. The cortex of your brain is actively blocking the deeper signals that are coming up from below. And mindfulness training teaches you how to be open to these neuromodulation effects. It's like the butterfly effect. You have the red light coming in and stimulating different neurons, or you have the ultrasound stimulating deeper brain structures. And those signals, those waves are trying to propagate out throughout your entire neural architecture. But if you can't shut your mind off, it's going to block those effects. And that's why expert level meditators show that even the internal signals like your heartbeat has more of an effect on brain architecture the deeper they get into meditation. So for my clients that are doing red light therapy, we practice mindfulness meditation because the more you can open up and connect your brain pathways, the deeper you're going to go with neuromodulation. You're really not just calming yourself, you're literally priming your nervous system to receive and amplify these interventions. So how do you apply this if you're in a neuroscience experiment using ultrasound? So ultrasound is coming. It's probably about two to five years out of being FDA approved for mental health conditions like depression or anxiety. So this information is going to be very applicable when clinics start offering it. For now, we have red light therapy, which actually has some added benefits outside of ultrasound neuromodulation, but we can use that model to amplify our red light therapy training as well. So number one, we definitely want to be using our mindfulness practice. The Muse headband is a great training tool for this. The Muse headband favors an increase in alpha brain waves, which definitely happens the more mindful and present you get. So doing that type of training builds the foundation, staying present with the breath, redirecting your mind to the breath when you get distracted. You can think of that as the base layer, like the most fundamental starting point for advanced meditation. The more present you can be with less thoughts going on, the more you are opening up those neurological gates to the intervention, which is the neuromodulation coming from ultrasound or red light therapy. Once you've established the mindfulness, you can then layer in the red light therapy. And V-Light gives you the ability to nudge your brain into different brainwave states. You can use alpha stimulation, which further supports that mindfulness awareness. I like to use alpha at the beginning of my sessions when I'm getting grounded and aware and mindful and ready for the advanced parts of my meditation. And then you have the gamma setting, which I like to turn on about 20 minutes into my session to move my focus higher into areas like the third eye, which helps elicit these elevated and transcendent states. What's really cool about the NeuroPro 2 is that you can actually create programs to do this, to nudge you up slowly from slower oscillations, like within the alpha range of eight hertz, and by one hertz every two minutes, nudge you all the way up into beyond 40 oscillations per second, which is the gamma range. So instead of switching manually from alpha to gamma when you're using the MIP or the Neuro Duo 4, you can actually slowly and smoothly rev yourself up using the Neuro Pro 2. Overall, it's the same concept. When you're doing red light therapy, do just try to be present, observant, and let those feelings arise. Stay with the feelings, stay with the bliss, stay with the grounded feeling. And that's where the meditation breakthroughs can really happen for you. Over the years, interacting with all these neuromodulation technologies has taught me something that I'll never forget, is that the technology is powerful, 
but it only works if you meet it halfway and mindfulness is that bridge. So whether you're sitting in a dark cave during a retreat or in a chair in a neuroscience lab getting your brain stimulated by ultrasound or using the Muse headband or the V-Light at home, it all is the same thing. It's this practice of presence that allows this neurotechnology through neuromodulation to unlock your full potential. If you want to learn more about my specific protocols using red light therapy, I do have a five day challenge that I would love you to join. It's called Sharper Every Day. And if you're interested in the red light therapy devices, I created a red light therapy buyer's guide that you can download for free. And if you'd like to see some of my experiments with red light therapy to validate its effects, check out this video here and I'll see you on the other side.